Hi, I'm John Everett with CERN Industries. Today I'd like to talk to you about winterizing your irrigation system along with your irrigation backflow preventer. What we're going to do today is we're going to demonstrate how to take all the water out of the system so we'll be ready to go for the winter time and we won't freeze and break any components. Looking at our setup here, what I've got is a Wilkins ZW3 winterizing valve along with a Zern Wilkins Model 720A pressure vacuum breaker. Now again, the concept here is for us to get the water out of the downstream side, get the water out of the backflow preventer, thus protecting these components during the winter time. What I want to do initially is I want to start by shutting off the ZW3. This is what shuts off my incoming water supply. And the ZW3 is nothing more than a wall hydrant. By shutting it off, we can evacuate all the water and also we can get to this valve without having to enter the building. So the ZW3 is a nice way to set up an irrigation system. Makes it really quick and easy to winterize without again entering the building. Once I shut off my ZW3, I want to shut off both of the ball valves to my 720A. Once I complete that, I'm now going to attach an air hose from my air compressor to the downstream piping. When I attach this air, this will allow me to go ahead and blow out the individual zones downstream. Now, it's very important that we not energize this with too much pressure. Too high of a pressure can cause damage to our rotors, to our zone valves, and other components in the irrigation system. So typically about 30 PSI is more than adequate. Now, when we get our air attached and we've got our compressor running, we're going to have to cycle through the individual zones of our irrigation system and blow them out one at a time. This will be accomplished by going to our irrigation controller and we'll set it up one at a time to go through the each individual zones. Once we've completed that process and we've blown all the water out of the downstream piping, the next thing for us to do is to go ahead, we can disconnect our air, we want to go ahead and remove the bottom plug to the ZW3. When I remove this plug, it will now allow any of the water within the ZW3 and also the water in my incoming riser to drain out, out and thus prevent freezing. When we complete that process, we also want to open up our test cocks on our 720A and that will allow us to drain out any water that's inside the, Z, or the 720A, any water that could potentially cause any damage to the valve. There may be a small amount remaining after we do this, but that won't cause any harm at all. Once we finally get all of the water out of the 720A and we've also let all the water drain out of our ZW3 and our incoming riser, the last thing we want to do is leave our ball valves and our test cocks in the half open, half closed position. By doing this, what we'll do is we'll prevent the ball inside of each one of those valves from trapping water that could potentially break them when they freeze. So again, we'll go ahead and leave these shut off valves and both of the test cocks in the half open, half closed position for the remainder of the winter. And that really takes care of winterizing the 720A and our irrigation system. Now in the next frame, we're going to show you how to winterize the system utilizing the Wilkins Model 375 Reduced Pressure Principle Assembly along with a blowout flush fitting. In this next sequence, we're going to winterize a Model 375XL Reduced Pressure Principle Assembly. Now, much like the 720A that we previously winterized, the procedure is about the same, but we have a feature and benefit with the 375XL that we did with the 720A, and that's called the blowout flush fitting. What this fitting does is it takes and it replaces the backflow preventer and it allows me to attach an air hose to the, the backflow body to blow out the irrigation system. It also allows me to attach a hose to the incoming side to flush out the incoming piping whenever I recommission the backflow preventer in the, in the springtime. But before we do so and install this, there's a few things that we have to walk through. First thing we're going to do is we're going to shut off the water to our entire irrigation system by closing what we call the ZW3 winterizer. This valve is nothing more than a wall hydrant, but it allows somebody to shut the water off to the irrigation system without having to enter the building. In a lot of applications in cold country, the shutoff to the irrigation system may be down in the basement. And if a person wanted to have a contractor come and do the winterization, they'd have to be home, let the contractor in, go to the basement to shut off the water. By having the ZW3, that eliminates that process. So again, we'll just shut off that ZW3 and that's going to isolate the entire irrigation system. Next, what I'll want to do is go ahead and open up my test cocks on the top of the backflow preventer to relieve the pressure in the body itself and to also relieve the pressure downstream. Once I do that, I can now remove the body from the backflow preventer and replace it with the blowout flush fitting. Now, it's a fairly straightforward procedure. All I have to do is remove these two screws from the top 
and remove what we call the wedge. This wedge is what squeezes all the body and the O-rings and seals together, etc. By removing the wedge, it allows me now to take the pressure vessel out of the backflow preventer. I simply slide it and pull it on out. Once I get the, the body of this backflow preventer out, again we call it the pressure vessel, I want to put this into a plastic bag, put it in the garage and protect it for the winter. It's going to have a little bit of water trapped inside and we don't want to leave it where it could freeze because it could damage it. Go ahead and put that away for later use and now what I'm going to do is reinstall the blowout flush fitting. I simply put it in the place of the body, go ahead and put my wedge back in there and then I tighten up the screws and that'll allow me to go ahead and to finish this procedure of blowing out. Now, once I get the blowout flush fitting on there, what I'll want to do is attach my air hose to the downstream portion of the BOF. And I didn't make mention of this, but I want to because a lot of people will look at that and they'll go, wait a minute, you're taking out a backflow preventer and you're putting something in there that's creating a cross connection. Well, frankly, that's not correct. This blowout flush fitting has a web in between the air port and what we would call the, the flush port, and that will prevent any fluid from flowing through it. So it is not a cross connection. I'm going to go ahead and add the air. And when we do interject air into this backflow preventer, we want to do it at a fairly low pressure. I'd say no more than 30 PSI. No high pressure. We don't need to cause any damage downstream. Usually 30 PSI would be more than adequate to drain the water out. When I go ahead and I start interjecting air in here by firing up my compressor, I'm going to want to go to my irrigation controller and manually go from station one to station two to station three, et cetera, going from zone to zone to zone. And that's going to evacuate all of the water out of that irrigation system. Once I get that all done, I've gone through however many zones that there are and I feel confident I've blown out all the water, I can go ahead and shut down my compressor and remove my air hose. And there's one last thing I want to do. We can leave the blowout flush fitting in there all winter long. Again, it's not a cross connection. It's not going to cause any problems. I do, though, want to leave my remaining test cock and my shutoff valves in the half open, half closed position. By doing that, I prevent the ball inside of the bronze body from trapping any water. If I have it either fully open or have them fully closed, that water could be trapped and it can damage or break the bronze ball valve or test cock, and that would force replacement. So after again, we got all the blowout procedure done, leave your shutoff valves in the half open, half closed position. Once I do that, I'm going to do one remaining thing, and that is drain any water that I have left in the incoming riser. I simply take the plug out of the bottom of the ZW3 winterizer, and that's going to allow whatever fluids remaining in that winterizer and also my incoming riser just simply to drain out to the ground. And now I've winterized my whole irrigation system. If you have any questions about what we've done here, typically if you contact your local authority having jurisdiction, they'll have procedures to do the very thing that we've uh, done here. But in the event that they don't, please don't hesitate to call Zern Wilkins. We're here to help you. We can give you better instructions over the phone. We can send you whatever you may need. Uh, we can even guide you while you're doing this, and we'd be very happy to do so. So again, don't hesitate to use us here at Zern Wilkins if you need that help.